So today we're going to talk about the worst stock market in 50 years and why I keep buying and I'm really hoping today this is going to be the best video that I actually put on my YouTube channel this year. I'm hoping it's a video that is re-watched multiple times and I've tried to put a lot of really good information in this video. So yeah, I really do hope it's help helpful and uh, we'll take a look at this stock market that we're in and why I keep buying stocks at the moment even though they keep going down. Now just to let you know, if you are on the Patreon, I did just drop a video which is the stock request where you guys vote on the Discord for me to look into free stocks and my thoughts on them that being Alibaba, Walgreens and Royal Mail this week. So do take a look if you're on the Patreon and if you want to join, the link is in the description. But taking a look at the stock market at the moment, the S&P has had a rough time. It's cooling down 9% in this month and the Nasdaq is even worse. If you have a quick look at the Nasdaq, uh, it's down 10% in the last month as well which is absolutely huge. And it's just been an awful year for the stock market. 2022 has been an awful year, as you can see here. We're currently down 30% on the NASDAQ. That's a massive crash. And when we look at the S&P 500, we're currently down 23%. And the thing is now is that we saw a little bottom in around that May, June time. And since that time frame, the stock market had a bit of a rally. And especially since August time, it's giving it all back, as you can see here, 13% down. And now we're starting to see multiple stocks put in lower bottoms than what they did in June time. And it's been an absolute bloodbath in the last few weeks. Now, believe it or not, this is now the worst stock market in 50 years, which is just absolutely crazy. You know, we've been saying about it's not got to the point yet where it's as bad as the 2008 recession, the Great Recession, you know, when you think about that time frame, you know, the whole banking system on the verge of collapse. And you're saying, well, it's nearly as bad as that. Actually, technically, at the moment, we are actually in a worse stock market than 2008, which is just bonkers to think we're going through the situation. And this is going to be one of those stock markets that's going to create history. It's going to be one of those stock markets where you talk about the dip, the dip that a lot of people, a lot of investors didn't make it through the other side. And there's going to be some investors that will make it through the other side. And you'll be talking about this dip for years to come. You'll be talking about the time we went through the, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what this is actually going to be called this period of time. I don't know if it's going to be called the Russia Ukraine war situation, the inflation situation. I'm not sure what period of time this is going to be. Like, you know, we talk about the Great Recession. I'm not sure what this is going to be named, but it's going to have a name. And uh, we'll be talking about going through this dip for a long period of time. And we'll remember how ugly this, this market was. You know, it's a, a stock market that for small cap investors has been two years of pain. Mid cap investors, that's been about two years of pain. And really, we've only had the indexes and the big market caps only joining in really since like November time. So they're quite new to the party. But even then, when you think November time, that's nearly a year of pain that we've gone on the indexes and uh, the big market caps at the moment. And it's quite an awful time frame to go through. You know, that 12 months of pain, it is an awful time period to sit through and keep buying and just seeing your stocks kind of keep going down. But today, I hope it just gives you that little bit more confidence to think about the long term picture, the patience, the rewards of buying on the dip and that situations that do look ugly do come positive and turn out to be uh, you know, amazing opportunities. So the first one I want to point out is the S&P 500. I've got here the chart of the Great Recession. We see the rally going in, in through 2006, two, 2007 a good year and pretty much mostly to 2008 was a pretty, uh, 2007 was a pretty positive year. Now as 2008 went on, you can see the decline in the S&P 500. And actually at this point, we're actually worse. It's quite a similar chart to what's going on at the moment. But you'll see here, especially towards that September, um, October time, very close to where we're at right now. The S&P actually had a massive nosedive, as you can see here. And it went from about 1,200 all the way down to 900. And in fact, there was even a period of time here um, around February time where it went down to 700. So this is why we're actually a, a lot worse stock market at the moment. This is why it's the worst stock market in 50 years. We're actually at the moment this dip here isn't as bad as what we're currently going through. Uh, the dip we're having at the moment is worse than this dip that we had in the Great Recession. The only way, the only thing why the Great Recession was such a bad year 
is because we had this massive decline here. So in the next few weeks, when this happens, we'll actually be overtaken by the Great Recession, but at the moment, we're actually performing worse. We were lower down here than where we were in the Great Recession. So that is how close it is at the moment. Uh, I don't think we'll get like a dip like this, but yeah, um, it kind of just puts it into context. But you'll see here, we had the big massive bottom here, and that was about a year period of pain through this Great Recession here. But you'll see here, especially when we put this bottom in, look how quickly we rose out of that Great Recession. Between uh, the February when, you know, the peak fear days of 2009, you know, the February time here, you see the massive bottom that was put in. It only took a month, two months to kind of recover out of that big peak dip of fear. And then when we had that big massive drop off in November time, you'll be able to see that it didn't take too long for the stocks to rally up in that period of time there. And then that was before you started getting a bit of fear about the double dip recession coming in. So that kind of shows you how quickly these indexes can recover from this kind of fear situation here. But this is obviously talking about the overall index. This isn't including individual companies in this list. First of all, I want to take a look at a company that you probably will have heard of, which is Apple. If we look at Apple in that period of time, you can see here that Apple share price massively fell off a cliff. And this was in a period of time where the iPhones were really ramping up and Apple was performing absolutely amazing. And you can see here, Apple went from a $7 stock and uh, all the way down here, we were touching a $2 stock. Apple went from a $7 stock down to $2 during this kind of great recession here. And the really funny thing is when you look at Apple, this was a, an amazing period of time for them. They came off a good 2006, 2007, and then in the Great Recession, the, the company absolutely exploded. You know, 37 uh, billion in revenue, 42 billion in revenue. And during this period of time, you had a company like Apple that had the new iPhone, everything was absolutely amazing. Probably the, the peak time as an Apple shareholder, you know, insane growth, this new uh, iPhone with the maximum potential they have to make revenue in the next few years from it. And yet you had a company here that lost half its value during that period of time. And that was, you know, funny to see a company that is, uh, you know, fundamentally su such a, um, performing so well and yet the share price massively went down and you can see here we talked about how quickly it comes out of this situation you see here apple was you know touching a two dollar stock if we look within a, a year's time apple then went up all the way to seven dollars and this is what we talk about you know you talk about indexes recoveries but when you actually have amazing companies that are massively sold off they they can recover even faster than the S&P 500. We look at Apple here, within a year's period of time, it went from $2 back up to $6, $7, which is just um, shows you that companies that are performing absolutely amazing can get caught up in this and very quickly can uh, recover this and are absolutely you know amazing buying opportunities. And the, the stock market crash just totally ignores company fundamentals. And now you look at that on a longer term picture, you know, over a 10 year time frame, and you're thinking about Apple down at a, um, you know, $2 stock and now it's a $177. It's just an absolutely phenomenal opportunity. And then just to compare it to a stock that's doing exactly the same right now, a, a business that got absolutely stung in the 08 situation and it now going through 2022 is having a exactly the same history repeat it all over again. So this one is Adobe. Adobe at the moment is getting absolutely killed off and it happened in the 08 crash. You'll be able to see here that Adobe, it was even actually a little bit higher if you can zoom out. Uh, it was all the way up here, $47 stock. Adobe went from $47 down to $16 during the Great Recession. That is a massive dive, $16. And same again, within a year's time, it was back up to $34 and same again, once you start zooming out on a longer term picture, you just think absolutely amazing opportunity. And Adobe was exactly the same as something like an Apple. I've actually got here Adobe's Q4 from 2008. You'll be able to see here, December 16th, 2008. And you'll be able to see here that they had record revenue here of 915 million compared to 911 million. And you can see here that they actually said, despite the difficult economic environment in 2008, we were able to achieve re record revenue and double digit growth for the sixth consecutive year. And you'll also be able to see here that the profit, uh, the gap net income was 871 million compared to 723 million in 2008. So you got a company here that the growing up good revenue, double digit growth, uh, you know, good profit growth 
in a period of time where the economy is really struggling and the company is performing fundamentally absolutely amazing and what do you have the share price absolutely tank from here from this earnings report as you can see and it's once again you're looking at this going absolutely crazy and the thing is it's like deja vu because this is a stock at the moment that's having exactly the same happen to it again and you and it's it's like history repeating itself and you saw the outcome from buying that adobe dip through the 08 period of time and the last one is nike um, and during 2008 same again this business was 17 dollars it went it went all the way down to nine dollars did nike now nike's a little bit different because during this period of time they got actually hit a little bit by the situation because people were losing jobs weren't going out and spending as much and you'll be able to see here that their revenue decreased by 2%. They did say that excluding charges in currency exchange rates, revenue would have increased 2%. So not too bad, not the growth that they had a little bit earlier. I believe in the last quarter, the quarter before this, they were actually growing at like 6%. So it was a little bit of a downgrade in the revenue, but still pretty steady away. And you can see here that third quarter net income also was a little bit down uh, compared to the last period as well. So that was obviously a decrease in profit. Not terrible results, but you can see here the company is having a little bit of an impact on revenue and profit. But you'll see here that the CEO at the time came out and said, today's results say a lot about the strength and diversity of Nike in a challenging environment. We delivered excellent operating results, executing with both focus and flexibility. And this is the thing that this business here, a company like Nike, yeah, there was a bit of impact on the financials. The revenue was maybe not growing as much as what it had been doing in say 2007. However, we look at the brand and Nike and you're looking and thinking, okay, they're holding pretty flat in the in the Great Recession, um, which is very, very impressive. And the CEO was coming out saying, look, this is a good results in the Great Recession. People losing jobs and we're pretty much flat. Sure, the fundamentals have deteriorated, but you look at the backdrop that that environment is and it's very impressive. So you imagine when we come out of a recession, we cannot, the, the world is not gonna stay in a recession forever. There's gonna be a day where the sun comes through and it's all merry and cheerful again and stocks are going up and people are back out spending money and there's not the worries in the world anymore. And looking at it from that point of view and thinking, okay, it's actually doing pretty well in this uh, period of time, but the stock market just went, nope, we're gonna, put your share price to half the value that it was. And once again, you just, you know, given a really good opportunity here and very quickly, people who were buying in that dip was very much rewarded. And once again, came an absolutely, you know, amazing performing stock here. And that's just the power of a mo and also looking at the situation going, actually, were these pretty good results given the situation? Maybe I should be buying this brand. It's a pretty good brand, it's absolutely performing. And there's just three examples here. Apple, a growth stock, you know, when we were actually talking Apple, when it was a growth stock, Apple, the growth stock performing absolutely amazing. Adobe, the company that's having nearly the same situation happen to it right now and what happened in, in that situation. And Nike, once again, you know, a stock that was actually pretty much impacted by the financials more than probably Adobe and Apple. And you saw the outcome from that situation. And today was just a point of view of showing this is what you want to be looking out for. There's many stocks out there that have lost half the valuation over these last few months while we go through this you know, bad time in the stock market. And it's very key because there's these opportunities out here once again. It's, it's like the 2008 situation all over again. There's opportunities out there that are massively overdone and amazing stocks. And that's what you gotta be looking at. You gotta be looking for those amazing companies that have been massively sold off. Some of those companies have been performing absolutely amazing and are still getting dragged down by the market. And even if there's some stocks that have maybe had some financial impact, like the Nike in 2008, look at the brand. Is the financial results actually pretty impressive in this period of time? And they're still getting dragged down. And maybe that's a buying opportunity. And why am I buying so much, right? Why am I buying stocks at the moment? Why am I enjoying this period of time? It's very much like, oh wait, we have got loads of stocks losing mass amounts of value at great valuations that shouldn't be losing this much. that are gonna look very good buying opportunities. And like we saw once again from that point of view, it's not too long before the good days come back and it will happen and there will be the rewards from buying in them dips. And you saw very quickly how things can change. You saw them charts there from the likes of Nike, Adobe, Apple, even the S&P 500, which obviously is the index, 
how quickly then things can rebound once a bit of positive, positivity comes back into the market. So this is why I'm buying, because I am seeing major amounts of opportunities here that I think you'll look back on in a few years time. And as long as you've got the patience to hold them through this situation, you'll be looking back and thinking these are good, some good old you know, golden opportunities right now. And I want to know that I capitalize on them. And that's why I keep buying stocks at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Anyway, guys, a bit of a flashback to uh, the 08 situation and uh, the similarities that are kind of going on there anyway, guys. Um, but yeah, hit the like button if you're new, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.